I've been using DHT powder and boy, do I have some results to report. Yeah, so listen, before I started my testosterone cycle, I was running um, just test prop and test cream and also DHT powder. I had a lot of really interesting results with that regarding erections, estradiol, um, an antidepressant effect, which I'm gonna break down in this video. It's probably the most profound effect that I've gotten so far from oral DHT powder. Then I gave it a break. I brought in Andrew Standalone Gel, which is DHT gel, continued running my cycle, and now I am back to running DHT powder. And in this video, I'm going to break down everything, what it did to estrogen, what it did to the feels, what it did to erections, importantly, what it seemed to do for the CNS and uh, how it exerts antidepressant activity. Like, DHT powder is a very useful weapon to have in the arsenal uh, for people on androgens, on TRT. I've seen it cure erectile dysfunction induced by decadurabolin. I've also seen it aid in the restoration of the sexual response in men with serious sexual dysfunction. I mean, for people that don't have any of those problems, but they just want an enhancement, a modulation of estradiol and antidepressant activity, uh, there's nothing better, in my opinion, at this point than DHT powder for this. We'll be launching the source list in about a week and a half, so folks will be able to partake if they need to, so please pay attention to that product. Suffice to say, though, boys, yeah, sit back, grab some popcorn, all right? Break open a beer, because I'm going to break down my experiments with raw DHT powder. Alright, first look, no Cortex Labs video would be complete without a funny meme in the beginning. So read them and weep, boys. All right, I hope you, hope you enjoyed that. Look, Cortex Labs is a performance optimization and hormone consulting company for men. We've got a range of different products ranging from the Torque Nootropic Stack, which is my brainchild of a nootropic, basically Adderall without the side effects, all day energy, very powerful nootropic. It's buy one, get one free right now, boys. My loss is your gain. Code is in the description of this video as well as on the screen. Coaching, if you need to hire me for TRT protocol redesign, that is one of the major things that I do that I have a lot of success at, as well as ongoing one-on-one, -on -one, three months, six months, or more ongoing packages coaching programs really where we we get a lot done we'll, we'll revitalize hormones erectile function libido trt protocols op, obviously dopamine restoration hosts of other things encompassed in that you can hire me for any of these things in under a minute at livecortex.com i figured i'd start off by just kind of talking about what chat gpt has to say about some of the effects that i got from oral dht powder because i think this will be a good primer to start this conversation and we'll look at the second question here because that first question was too general listen you use chat gpt you ask it not specific questions it's going to give you very general answers if you ask it specific questions then it gives you more specific answers my second question here was why do i get lower estrogen effects from taking dht powder so does dht actually lower estradiol and the only real specific answer that's relevant that I also found across various sources of literature, as well as di diving deeper into the answer of why you might get lower estrogen feels from taking DHT, is that the body converts testosterone to both DHT and estrogen. If DHT levels rise significantly, it might divert some testosterone away from being converted into estrogen. And this is what I think is actually happening. So yes, I get a lower estrogen feel, which depending on the context can be good or it can be bad when taking oral DHT. And I think the reason for that is it's got this potent agonism that doesn't disassociate as fast from the receptor as testosterone. And so less of that testosterone is then binding to the receptor and metabolizing into estradiol. If you have a non-aromatizable androgen, meaning DHT at the receptor, well, you're going to get less estrogen conversion. If you try to uh, dive into the literature around DHT and estradiol and exactly what it does, there's going to be all kinds of different responses. But one thing you'll find is that it reduces estradiol-induced prolactin secretion. Estradiol fusses with the D2 receptors, the dopamine receptors at the lactotropes uh, on the pituitary gland and triggers prolactin release or can trigger some degree of prolactin release. Dihydrotestosterone reduces the estrogen-induced prolactin release. 
And again, I think that's probably because it, it, more DHT is binding to the AR, less testosterone is then around to be aromatizable to convert to estradiol. There may be some other intermediate or direct mechanism that isn't elucidated in the literature, but suffice to say, uh, DHT does lower estrogen. If it's if it's lowering estrogen-induced prolactin release, it's having an antagonistic effect on estradiol. Okay, so we just wanted to talk about that estrogen stuff right away as a preface to my experience with DHT powder. All right, first, let's talk about the doses. So first, I ran uh, 30 milligrams of oral DHT with olive oil. So I put a little bit of olive oil in a capsule and weighed out 30 milligrams of DHT powder and threw it down with some water. I tried 50 milligrams, okay, so bumping the dose up more 50 milligrams oral DHT with some olive oil in a capsule down the hatch I ran 20 milligrams with olive oil again I wanted to try different doses to see what effect it had on estrogen the sexual function if higher dose was better or if a lower dose was better and the answer to that question is very surprising then I ran uh, 5 milligrams and 10 milligrams respectively sublingual DHT okay she just weighed out some powder on the scale Dosed it sublingually, let it sit for five minutes, wash it down with water, done and done. And these were the results, okay? Let's let's start with the higher end dose of DHT and we'll talk about what happened. So on both the 30 and the 50 milligram doses of DHT, I got uh, what was an immediate erectogenic response and a libido response. So more powerful erections, more spontaneous erections, better girth, interestingly but not surprisingly. But the interesting thing about that is that lasted maybe a day or so after which uh, libido specifically started to decline. Okay, so day one of a high dose of DHT, sexual function was like, I was like a madman, but then on day two to like day three or so, because it's a pretty short half-life and it gets cleared from the system relatively quickly, uh, libido specifically took a hit. Erections were fine, but libido was definitely noticeably subpar, as if I had taken too much aromasin or taken too much of an AI. So I know that feeling, the mental visceral part of libido sort of starts to die down, and that's what happened on high dose DHT. So immediate sexual function enhancements followed by a reduction in libido without an effect on erectile quad actually stayed fine during that time. Now, what do I attribute this to? I think it's just lowering estrogen. Yeah. You know, it's either antagonizing it at the genetic level or it's actually lowering the serum because again, DHT binds to the AR. It's the more active potent androgen when you have DHT, oral DHT in the mix, but you're also injecting testosterone or using cream, the DHT is going to take precedence over the testosterone. And that, that's just the bottom line. The DHT has a greater affinity. The receptors have a greater responsiveness to DHT. And so they sort of make this preferential decision, the body does, to uh, accept the DHT rather than the testosterone. So you have a reduction in estradiol because you have less aromatizable material. Now at the 30 milligram and the 50 milligram doses, okay, I had a profound, profound antidepressant effect. I mean... Even better than Proviron. Proviron gives you an effect where you just feel fucking on top of the world. Super masculine, your shoulders start to edge out. There is some physical effects, you get a little drier, but you just feel like you can conquer and tackle energy, anything. That masculine energy, you know, that, that some of us feel on androgens, like it just ascends tenfold into the fucking stratosphere. So, you know, I had massive antidepressant effects, okay? Like super confidence, super manufactured confidence. I do not normally, I'm very confident normally, but that level of confidence is another level of confidence. It's the kind of confidence you just can't shake. Nothing can interfere with that level of confidence. You're just a stone cold fucking stoic and it's awesome. But the antidepressant effects are perhaps like of all of this, like the most powerful benefit. And look, there's a lot of papers on the antidepressant effect of DHT, including this one. Testosterone's anti-anxiety and analgesic effects may be due in part to its 5-alpha reduced metabolism in the hippocampus where they go on to describe the antidepressant effect of dihydrotestosterone. DHT obviously has an effect in addition to just my anecdotal like on uh, potentially neuroplasticity on, on brain health in general, right? I, I think without adequate levels of DHT, which is what we see in people with uh, PFS, they have all manner of cognitive problems. We even have papers on this. There's a strong association between the reduction of uh, DHT via 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride and fucking dementia, depression, and suicide. So 
Obviously, there's a strong interplay between DHT and the brain. So suffice to say, very neuroactive stuff, guys. I mean, uh, DHT powder is more like a nootropic than most nootropics. It's actually hard to replicate that level of confidence and cognition that I personally get. And I think a lot of people will get um, with nootropics compared to actual DHT powder. So like <laughs> maybe we're recognizing here DHT powder is a nootropic. All right, let's talk about the lower doses. So the doses of five and 10 milligrams sublingually is where I got the craziest effects, interestingly, okay? Higher dose, I had a great sexual function for about a day and then libido started to, to go down a little bit, but confidence and masculinity and the antidepressant effect were very, very prominent. But on the five milligram sublingual dose and the 10 milligram sublingual dose, not only was the antidepressant effect and the confidence and the masculinity effect very present, I was just like generally happier, had a better fucking outlook on everything. I was just a lot more resilient to problems that arise in the fact that I'm running two companies and there's always problems. <laughs> there's always shit happening, right? So I've always got to deal with stuff. It was just a lot easier to deal with that in both doses of DHT, but on even the lower doses, I still had the same degree of kind of that neurocognitive um, happiness effect, which was very powerful and exerted an antidepressant outcome. Regarding sexual function, the same libido and erectile optimization was present, but without uh, seemingly or likely a drastic reduction in estradiol to the point where it lowered my libido. So libido and erections and the sexual function stayed good and was better on the lower doses of DHT. So here's a case of, at least in my particular case, because I'm on a, a, you know high, high levels of androgens at this point, and with higher levels of androgens, I can't be sitting at 20 to 30 picograms per milliliter of estradiol. It just messes with my libido. It's gotta be like 45, 50, 55. Then I feel really good. In this particular context, lower dosing of DHT was better for everything, okay? It was better for sexual function, it was better for libido, didn't mess with it at all, made it better, uh, and it still exerted the same antidepressant, powerful mood-enhancing effect that the higher doses did. So, like, when I step back and think about this, like, what the hell happened? Number one, I, I think on higher doses of DHT, Yes, the DHT likely via its potent agonism and potent affinity for the ARs displaced some of the testosterone that I was dosing, which is 150 milligrams of testosterone and thate every other day. So I am on a test cycle of 525 a week, and that's a lot of testosterone. But this shows how powerful DHT is at going at the receptor side and blocking the action of testosterone and thus blocking the action of aromatization. So with the higher doses, I just got less aromatization in the acute period, which rendered likely an actual serum drop and a tissue level reduction in estradiol specifically. So much so that again, one of the other effects after about a day of good sexual function was a reduction in libido, which happens to me if my estrogen goes too low, whatever testosterone dose I'm at, especially when I'm running cycle level doses of testosterone, where I kind of need the estrogen to be elevated. If I was taking an AI and it took it to 20, I wouldn't have libido. Secondarily, at the lower doses, it probably antagonized estradiol to a very minimal extent, which is exactly what I need. You know, even on, on higher doses of testosterone, I, I still need to manage estrogen because it'll go to 95 or 100 <laughs> like it has, and I've got on blood work, and that wasn't particularly fun for sexual function. I do need to manage estrogen a little bit, right? So a little bit of aromacin, or in this case, what I've come to learn is that DHT powder acts perfectly in synergy with high levels of testosterone or a testosterone cycle for estrogen management. It's actually, it's actually unbelievable. Like it, it's, it's almost too good to be true because not only does it lower estrogen and, and lower the estrogen like effects, but it has this powerful, powerful antidepressant effect, which turns on masculinity and mood and confidence and happiness and your outlook on life. I know I'm making this sound so good because it actually is, but on the, on the lower doses of DHT, what I, what I think happened is it, it wasn't enough estrogen reduction to fuck with libido at all. It's enough potent agonism at the ARs to facilitate erectile quality, as well as to exert all of the neuroactive benefits of dihydrotestosterone to enhance mood, have an antidepressant effect, and generally make me feel 
fucking awesome. So although we like to, I mean, I like to generally speaking with testosterone, especially at this point, like think more is more so long as you're meta uh, managing the metabolites, which is always true or almost always true. I guess I suppose it depends on the person. I mean, people's hematocrit can go out of range and that can be problematic. With DHT, uh, I found personally less is more. Less is more. Less is great, which is amazing, right? Because again, I'm launching the source list soon, so look forward to that product. If you have DHT, I mean, my DHT powder is going to last for a fucking year. I, I do not need to take a lot of it to get a very pronounced effect. I can use it as a, as an ongoing strategy to manage estrogen as well as to enhance my mood and have all these powerful effects on the brain. Or I could use it as an ad hoc, kind of like I would aromasin, you know, or an estrogen reduction strategy. You know, if I let it go and don't take any DHT or aromasin and the estradiol creeps up to 80 or something, and then obviously I start having dick problems at that point, a little bit of DHT in that problem problem is resolved. But ultimately, I was surprised that less ended up being more. I was surprised at that. And I have a lot of experience using DHT, but specifically with sexual dysfunction with men. So with them, like as much DHT as they can get, it, it, it is better, is best. But with me personally, that where I don't and my DHT is already double the top of the range, too much of it pushed the estrogen a little lower. Um, basically cause side effects regarding libido. And in the end, like less was more. And I'm thrilled about it, boys. Five milligrams, 10 milligrams sublingually, like that's at least right now, my new oral DHT powder dose. So I wanted to do this video to like give people um, a, a real life experience, a real life look into what it is like to take DHT, because I think a lot of people, especially content creators, have some sort of, everybody has an opinion on DHT. You've got people that think it isn't necessary and only contributes to hair loss, which is obviously fucking ridiculous. And then you've got people that swear it's the best thing ever, and it is awesome. But again, you've got to dose it appropriately. Same thing as Proviron, same thing as Primabon, same thing as Masteron. Anything that's going to mess with estradiol, you've got to dose it appropriately in order to find the sweet spot to get the real benefits from it. But what I wanted to do in this video is give you like a, a no frills, cut and dry, no bullshit look into exactly how DHT affects a guy that's running a testosterone cycle, uh, people running testosterone in general, so that you can understand Yes, in my lower estrogen, it will enhance sexual function to a degree as long as it's not too much DHT taken at a time. And regardless of the dose, it's going to have a very, very powerful antidepressant effect. So powerful that it, it, it I don't know. I mean, it's, it's uh, I don't want to say it should be illegal because it should actually be legal, but but it, it is it's just very, very strong. More to come on this. I, I think as I continue dosing it, I will find different variations of like testosterone dosing as well as DHT doses that work well for me. And I'll probably do a part two on DHT powder. So look forward to that. But suffice to say, I've got enough uses with it at this point at various doses. Lower doses are better. Regardless, there's an antidepressant effect. And the stuff is very powerful. I am super happy that I got it. I'm thrilled to have it. And now it's an addition to all the tools we have in the tool shed. All right, boys, if you need to hire me for consulting or coaching, I've got a TRT protocol redesign. That is our most popular consulting service where I will overhaul your entire protocol, give you sources for add-ons, really talking about dialing in to the greatest extent possible. And you can hire me for the TRT protocol redesign and under a minute live If you need to work with me more ongoingly, this is where we get a lot of work done. Sometimes I need three months with you. Sometimes I need six months with you. It depends on the severity of the issue. If you've got the budget, please hire me hire me in under a minute at livecortex.com. We'd be on the fact finding call in under a day so that we can start. Torque stack, our stack, my nootropic stack that I built for myself initially, honestly, and then made it a commercial stack. Very, very powerful, like Adderall or Modafinil without some of the side effects that some of those compounds can come with. It's buy one, get one free at the moment. So use the code on the screen. The code is also down in the description of this video. Go get a bottle because if you buy one, you will get another free. All right brother. It has been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Content coming this weekend. Live stream Saturday, boys. So be prepared for that. If you're doing nothing at 9 a.m. in the morning Eastern time on Saturday, which if you're in the UK, I guess that's whatever that is, five hours later. If you're in the States, it's 9 a.m. Be there because it's like an hour and a half of just like live consulting, basically me answering questions that people have. Sub to the channel, hit the like button, makes a huge difference. It's free for you to do and really does move the needle more than you would think. So I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. Otherwise, boys, I'll talk to you in the next one. <laughs>